Hi everyone and welcome along to the February Pop Kit tutorial. Thank you so much for purchasing the kits this month um, and welcome along if you're just here for a bit of plant relaxation, um, a bit of therapy, uh, just somewhere to come and relax and watch us pot up and see how it all works. Um, this month we have six pockets and we're bringing back from last year the Muscari, which you absolutely loved last year. It was, um, yeah, just one of our first pockets and you sold out our um, selection three times. So we are bringing it back this month um, using different pots um, mainly, but then also using one of the original pots that we used for that collection um, uh, last year. So we are using uh, various Berg's Potter pots and then a resin dip pot as well. Um, we've gone for um, one sort of little pot kit um, and then a slightly larger version of that um, because the white um, hyacinth um, was such a sort of a hit last month with you all. So I think um, we've brought that pot back again. And then we're also going to do two different planters this month. So we've got the normal planter that we always do that always sells out and then a new um, planter um, in a different pot as well. And then we're bringing back another of our gorgeous trios because you love them for your tablescaping and for your windowsills and for um, styling your homes with. So we've got a trio as well. So let's begin. So the first of our two pot kits for this month is the little white mascara pot kit and then also the large white mascara pot kit. And I thought I'd pot them up together and because they're so similar, um, obviously just the difference in size, and just to show you um, the differences and how you pop them up, but then also give you some tips on how to look after them. So for these kits, you have, if, you're, if you've ordered the little one, it comes in the 12 centimeter Simona kit, uh, Simona pot, sorry. So you get all this beautiful detailing, the gorgeous matching saucer, and then for the larger white mascara pot kit, um, it's a 14 centimetre pot and again just all this gorgeous kind of rib detail and the matching saucer to go with it as well. So they are sold separately um, but it will just, just gives you um, sort of an idea of size um, and comparison for, uh, for the both of them. So in your kit as always you'll receive your gravel, your moss, your compost, your plants, your dry thyme and your birch twigs. And basically it gives you everything you need to pot up your kit. So to begin with, we're going to go in with our gravel. So use all the gravel that you have in your kit because it's all been measured out. And quite simply, you add your gravel to the bottom of the pot, mainly for the main reason that it provides drainage. Ideally have your pot sat in your saucer or on your saucer before you do that so it doesn't all go through down into the holes. So I'm going to do the other one as well. And then after that, we'll go on to the compost. So adding the compost in, again, just use all of it, all that's gone in your kit, because we've measured it all for you. Now for this larger pot kit, you can actually, if you want to, take it out quite simply and pop it straight into the pot. So you would maybe use less compost and then put it straight in. I'm going to sort of tease the roots a little bit just to get them a little bit less sort of root bound. And then that is when you can then put it in. You might find, see where I've, I've put too much compost in, so I'm gonna take some of that out, put it into the other one. So the idea is that you want them to be slightly higher than the rim of your pot. So then you can see all of these beautiful, sort of papery thin bulbs, because that's really what it's all about. You then, add in the rest of your compost 
around the sides. Being careful of any tiny little mascari buds that are just coming up. Making sure there's no pockets of air. And then gently push down. So this is showing sort of one way to do it and then I will show you the other way on the smaller size. So in this way you've, you've just potted, literally taken it out of the pot, the plastic pot and popped it straight into the terracotta pot. The other way to do it is to add more compost so you're almost at the top. So this is the little white mascari one that I'm showing you here. And then you take your bulbs out of the plastic pot and what you can do is just gently break the bulbs apart so you've still got that gorgeous root system so they're absolutely fine they'll get all the nutrients from the soil but it means you can just pop them in in a slightly more relaxed sort of, I mean, I mean, I guess haphazard way or just a bit more sort of authentic rather than them being really sort of compact together. The benefit of doing them though compact, how I've done them in the larger kit, is that you can then add your moss around the edge. With this, this way, you'll be adding your moss more sort of in amongst and dot it around and you probably won't get as mo much moss in there, but we'll see how we go. So making sure those roots are touching the soil below. And I sort of sometimes almost sort of screw them in so that you're kind of twisting and then they're sort of sat on top of their roots with the roots tucked in underneath. Now these have lovely long roots, so it's a really gorgeous, fresh plant. Okay, so that's the sort of difference between the two. You've got one that's, like I said, more compact, um, more sort of structured, and then the other one that's just a little bit more sort of rustic, I guess. So now we can add in the moss. So if I show you on this one. You've got three different types of moss. You've got the flat moss, you've got the bun moss, and then the sphagnum moss. So three different types of mosses. I would say you might struggle with the bun moss to get it in, in this kit. So it will be in your kit, but you might not want to use it. You might feel like you can use it for something else. But this is where I'm gonna go in with the flat moss. Just going to tuck it around the edge of the bulbs and you'll see it's just such a lovely contrast between the green moss and those sort of natural papery bulbs from the mascari. And then inside, so amongst all the, the sort of compost you can see in there, I would then pop in some sphagnum moss just as a sort of contrast. Again, you've then got these gorgeous little bulbs just peeping through. Okay, so that's that one. And then as you can see on this one, it is somewhat easier to fit the moss in between because they are a little bit more spread out. So I'm gonna give the bum moss a go. It is a lot sort of more it's chunkier than the other mosses. But just see what you think. I'll do a few, sort of a bit more of a mixture for this one. So this is the sphagnum moss. And I like it when it sort of hangs out over the side. 
doesn't need to look perfect. And then the lastly, it's the flat moss going in. So that's the sort of difference, but not a massive difference, but just they're just slightly more kind of, I guess, relaxed when they're taken apart. And then now we can add in the twigs. So we've got the dry thyme, which is sort of this beautiful kind of sagey green colour, which you just trim down and place in amongst your bulbs. It's completely up to you how high you do your um, twigs. So, I mean, varying heights would be ideal, because obviously at the moment, when you receive your kit, they will be in this kind of form. So really, really fresh, really new. Um, and then eventually they will, of course, end up like this. So this beautiful white kind of sort of bells and just, yeah, just a really lovely kind of early spring, late winter bulb. So I would suggest doing sort of various heights because the purpose of these twigs, apart from the aesthetics and how gorgeous they look, is to add um, support to your bulbs. So when they grow, the twigs sort of add a bit of structure for them to kind of entwine themselves in. Okay, so then I'm going to now add in the birch twigs, which again, I'd say probably you'd leave these a bit taller they give that structure. So again, just cut them down. You don't need loads, in my opinion. It's just a little touch of the twigs. Okay, last one, just near the front. So that's the large white mascari pop kit all finished. And then I'll just finish off the, the little white mascari pot kit with the dry thyme. You can cut these twigs with secateurs if you want to, but they are also really easy just to quite simply snap and add in. And adding in the birch twigs. So the whole sort of point of these kits when they bloom is that they are really lovely and relaxed. They all go in different sort of directions. really beautiful and rustic and just some tips on how to look after this kit so the um the gravel obviously acts as sort of the, the drainage for them but you do need to be aware that you're not over over watering so that the roots aren't sort of sat in you know like a really kind of deep well of water in their pot i would suggest watering probably every two days um just to keep the soil nice and damp but not waterlogged um, I would keep them away um, from uh, fresh fruit um, because of the sort of the gases that um, fresh fruit emit into the atmosphere and it kills off plants and flowers much quicker. Um, and obviously if you're keeping things in the kitchen, just keep them away from anything, you know, if you're wiping down surfaces, just don't spray any kind of um, surface clean or anything near them because um, that might get into their sort of compost and they're not going to like that at all and you might find that that actually kills them. So just keep them away from those kinds of things and away from, um, you know, like a radiator because that will, it won't kill them. It will just mean that they will, they will go over quicker. So you should get a really good lifespan out of them. And then when they have finished and they've gone over, um, they can then be cut down and then you can plant these bulbs um, into the garden and then they will come back next spring. So that's the first of the two pot kits. So we have the large 
white mascara kit and the little white mascara kit. So for our next pop kit we have the white mascara trio which comes in these adorable 10 centimeter Berg's Potter terracotta pots with their lovely kind of uh, scalloped edge and their little saucers. They are so gorgeous together um, and they're perfect for a trio. So as always, you'll get your gravel, your compost, your moss, your twigs, your birch twigs, your thyme, and your um, plant as well in each kit. So first of all, we'll just add in the gravel, the purpose of which is just to add some drainage to your kits so that your, um, the roots of your bulbs aren't just set in sort of a pool of water. So use all the gravel that you get in your kit and then add in some compost. You can also use um, the compost that comes with your uh, bulbs, so the compost that your bulbs are already in, um, if you want to. So I'm just going to start off with sort of filling it um, probably about halfway with the idea that then I'm going to see how much compost I need um, because I will take some from the pot that they're actually already in. Um, so you'll see here a lovely root system. So I'm just going to now gently break the bulbs away. And this is where you can then add in your compost to the bottom, uh, to the, sorry, into the pot. So you're using both. And then you just sit the bulbs on top. Definitely a messy job. And then gently tease the bulbs away and put them in. So you get two pots of bulbs in each trio kit. Um, I don't think it's exact how many bulbs you get in the um, in the plastic pots, but there will be plenty to go into your into your kits. So I'm going to start with putting three in each, but I expect I'll probably come back and put more in. Gosh, that's a chunky one, isn't it? Gorgeous. Okay, so so far we have three in each and then there's two bulbs left in this kit, in uh, this, sorry, pot. Some compost underneath that one. And then just going to add in the bulbs from the next pot that you get. So just gently taking the pot with its roots, at uh, the bulb, sorry. One in there. So there's four in that one. We'll probably try and get five into this one here. So just tucking the roots underneath the bulbs so that they're going to have access to that the nutrients in the soil okay so I've got five in that one I'm going to add another one in this one in the middle just tucking that in And then I'm going to put another two, if I can, in this one here. But this bulb here is quite a big one. I'm going to take that out. feels almost frozen. Oh, there's a rock in there, <laughs> some kind. I'm going to leave that one. I'm going to use these ones instead. So in this one, I've got five, five in each. 
And now we can move on to adding in the moss that goes on top. So in your kit, you'll have three different types of moss. So you'll have the sphagnum moss, the flat moss and the bun moss, just to add really lovely contrast. So I'm going to start here with this first one with the sphagnum moss and just break it up and just tuck it in amongst the bulbs. I want to be able to see the bulbs and the contrast. So this one, I'm just going to use sphagnum moss. And then for the next one, I'm going to use a mixture, just so you can see the sort of difference. And then you can decide which moss you want to use, whether you use all of it, or if you just go with one of the types, or mix it up for each of your, um, one of your trio. The bun moss is definitely trickier to get in because it is so chunky but even just a tiny bit just adds another texture to your kits. Okay, and then this one, I'm going to pop some flat moss in. Tuck it around, and then I'm going to add some bun moss. So with the bun moss, you can take off this sort of root system here, just to make it a little bit easier to pop into your kit. I'm gonna pop some sphagnum moss in there as well. Okay, so that's them potted up and now we can add in our twigs. So you have two different types. You have your birch twigs and your dry thyme. So quite simply, you can just snap these with your fingers if you don't want to use secateurs. And you're just adding in, just to add some kind of texture, but also a slight sort of support system for when the mascari grow. So obviously when you receive your kit, there will be in beautiful kind of bud form how they are now and then they will grow to sort of these gorgeous white tall spring flowers again it's just all about layering that texture and all those tones of green and you can be as rustic as you want you can change the height so you can go tall you can go you know varying heights so some of the time can be really short and even you could even lay it on the sort of the bed of the moss and then some of it can be nice and tall which can provide that support um for when the mascari grows and then i'm going to add in the birch twigs next Again, the birch twigs are really good at providing that sort of structure um, when the mascari grows. Definitely doesn't need to be perfect.
So this trio looks really lovely placed somewhere like on a windowsill together or on a shelf or you know on a book alcove. Um, that's where I sort of imagine it being placed when I came up with this idea, this kit. In saying that, you can obviously split them up and use them throughout your home um, as long as they're getting sunlight, um, they're not too warm, and as long as they can be watered, I'd say every two days. So give them a really good drink every two days. Um, don't let them sort of sit in, you know, lots and lots of water. So don't waterlog them, but definitely keep the, the soil nice and damp. Um, and as with the other kits that we've just gone through, just keep them away from fresh fruit. Um, don't spray any sort of, um, you know, surface cleaner or anything near them. Um, and um, yeah, just keep them cool, um, but some, some nice sunlight and keep them uh, well watered. And there you have it. So that is your white mascari trio kit. So next we have our two planter kits. So I'm going to do these um, one after the other so that you can see them both um, together and, and the differences in them, the differences in their pots. So we have our best-selling um, planter pot for this one. So this is the lovely sort of like scalloped edged planter pot um, as our first planter kit. And then the next planter will be in this sort of lovely kind of fluted um, pot. So this is called the White Mascari Fluted Planter Kit. So we'll start with this one first. Um, as always in your kit, you will receive your gravel, your compost, your moss and your plants, and then your dried thyme and your birch twigs. So I'm just adding in the gravel to the bottom of the pot. So the purpose for this is just to add some drainage so that the roots aren't sat in sort of, um, you know, like a pool of water at the bottom of the pot when you, when you water them. So after I've added in the um, gravel, I will then go in with the compost. Now I'm going to use all of the compost, um, or I would say use all the compost that is in your kit, because you want it to go quite reasonably high up in your pot, because the bowls are just going to sort of sit just on top. And you want to be able to see those bulbs um, above the sort of rim of the, um, of the planter. So once you've your compost is all pretty much, you know, not far off the top of the pot, you can then start adding in your gorgeous mascari bulbs. So in your kit, you'll get two pots of mascari. And what you can do is just very gently break your bulbs up into single bulbs. And then just sit them on top of your compost. Making sure the roots are sort of tucked underneath. Now you can plant these in sort of clusters together if you want to. Um, I like to sort of put them in first and then decide and move them around to decide where I want them to sit. So for this planter, I'm going to show it to you how you will receive your bulbs. So your bulbs will be um, really fresh, sort of how they are now, um, not in bloom. And then for the next planter, I will show it to you in sort of full bloom, so you can see the sort of result and how they're going to look when they flower. Okay, so that's the first um, pot. So then adding in the second one. So this is where you can just sort of start to cluster. I think it, it looks much more authentic and relaxed when they are sort of clustered in little groups rather than being, you know, all perfectly spaced out um, and uniform. So for example, here, I'm just going to put three together in a little group here. And 
And then I might say, for example, leave one of the bulbs on its own, sort of maybe this one here with a bit of space around it, and maybe this one here, just so that it looks nice and natural. Again, it just adds to the interest when it's not sort of perfectly uniform. But you've got obviously creative license, so pop them in however you like to. But by having two sort of pots of the bulbs, you'll get a really, really um, sort of beautiful floral display when they bloom. Okay. So that's all the bulbs in now and all their roots sort of tucked under so that they reach the compost and reach those nutrients. And now we can add in the moss. So the purpose of the moss is, you know, obviously it's aesthetics and it's, it looks so beautiful and it's such a lovely contrast, but it also is really good at stopping, um, you know, excessive um, levels of moisture from evaporating. Um, so it keeps that soil nice and damp. So I'm going to start with your, the bun moss, which I'm then going to sort of break up and place amongst the bulbs. Now, my favourite thing about these kits is the fact that you can still see the bulb. You know, you're not sort of covering up that gorgeous, like papery, um, thin sort of spring bulb. But you want to be able to see it. So you can sort of just lift the bulb slightly just to tuck the moss sort of in amongst them. I'm then going to add in some of the flat moss. you can see it just starts to build up the sort of layers of texture now I'll add in some sphagnum moss which is sort of more kind of um, two-tone more sort of loose and structured um, loosely structured sorry um, moss So some of these bulbs have little offshoots of mascari, so I'm just being really gentle when I tuck the moss in that I'm not sort of damaging anything. So as you can see there, you don't want to sort of knock the head off that. Again, making sure I can still see the papery bulb after the moss has gone in. So that's all the moss and now we can add in the twigs. So we have in the kits some dried thyme and some birch twigs. So as I've said with the other kits, the purpose is, you know, to add that texture, it looks beautiful, but also to create sort of a bit of structure and almost sort of, a sort of structural support for the mascari when they grow. Um, you'll see when I do the next planter how that works in terms of um, sort of supporting um, the stems with the birch especially. So just adding in the dry thyme. creates a sort of almost woodland sort of gar garden, sort of carpet of moss kind of feel. And then the birch. The 
birch I'd probably put in, as I have with the other kits, a bit keep them the sort of the stems a little bit longer um, because they do provide that sort of um, structural support. So that's the first one done. So that is your, um, uh, sorry, that is your white muscari planter kit. And then we're now going to move on to the fluted muscari kit, which is a slightly different pot, just to show you the difference. And I'm also going to do this one, as I said, using the sort of fully bloomed muscari, so you can see the difference. So as we've just done with the other planter kit, I'm going to add in your gravel to the bottom of the pot and then go in with your compost. This is a new um, pot for us so again it's a beautiful Berg's Potter terracotta pot. They're made handmade in Tuscany and they really are just an absolute delight. They are so beautiful. They're frost proof, you can have them indoors, outdoors. They're just really stunning. Okay, so now that you've got your compost in your pot, you can start adding in your bulbs. So if I just sweep that aside. Okay, so you'll have your two pots two uh, plastic pots of muscari and it's a gorgeous root system and then much like with the other planter we're just going to gently tease the bulbs apart keeping their root system intact and then we're just going to add them into the soil into the compost sorry and again, they might flop about a bit for a minute until I've got the uh, birch twigs in. And also, of course, you know, the difference is, is that their root structure hasn't sort of, um, you know, penetrated into the compost in this kit um, because I'm planting them when they're sort of in bloom. So when you plant your fresh bulbs, they will be a lot more sort of sturdy because their root system will have sort of gone into the compost to provide that anchor. But in say, saying that, muscari, the one of the beautiful things about it is the fact that it is so sort of, you know, delicate and when it's planted, it goes this way and that way and it's not really structured. Um, it's just, it is probably one of my favourites. I also love it in the blue that it comes in as well. But um, yeah, I think the white really looks nice with all the um, the moss. Although saying that, maybe next month I might do blue. We'll see. Okay. So you can see now by using, this is just one of the kits, or one of the pots, sorry, um, how lovely and full it looks. See, now this one will definitely need some birch support. Okay, moving on to the second. So again, just gently taking the bulbs apart, their root systems.
really delicate scent. It's not overpowering, um, you know, like some um, bulbs can be. It's just a really subtle, sort of, um, a subtle hyacinth sort of scent. They are related, obviously, to the hyacinth. They, uh, the other name for them is grape, grape hyacinths. Um, so they have that sort of slight hyacinth scent, but it's really delicate. Okay, so now those are in and flopping all over the place, but we're going to add in the birch after we've added in the moss, sorry, the birch, which will provide that structure so that they feel a bit more supported. So I'm going to add in some bun moss. And then some flat moss as well in the gaps. And then some sphagnum moss in those gaps in the middle as well. See if I can get there. <laughs> definitely, definitely easier Ooh, planting when they are in, you know, fresh bulb form, which is how you will receive them. But hopefully this just gives an indication of, of how your plants will look once they are in full bloom. Okay, one last bit at the back. And then we'll add in the twigs. So then we will get that support that we need. So I'm going to start with the birch this time. Just adding the twigs in and then after the twigs are in, that's when you can start to sort of create that sort of winding sort of motion with the mascari kind of woven in amongst the twigs. They just look so stunning, how they're just going all different ways, different motions, different directions. So this is where I meant sort of to keep some of the birch a bit longer than the time, at uh, the time, sorry. Let's add in a few more. But this bit here and that around the back, it just looks so lovely how they're all just kind of crisscrossing over each other. Now I'm going to add in the dry thyme. Again, this will be, you'll probably end up putting this maybe a bit lower down, not quite so sort of tall as the birch. This probably doesn't add quite so much of a sort of support, but just gives a really lovely texture.
So in terms of looking after your planters, ideally be, you should be watering sort of every two days, I'd say, keep the um, soil really nice and damp, um, but not waterlogged. Uh, keep them away from fresh fruit um, and from sort of radiators and things like that. And then um, what you can do when they do eventually go over, and they will start to go brown first, um, and that still looks actually really pretty. Um, last year I had mine um, out for ages actually and just let the sort of, let them dry out. And I then cut them down. So take, take them down to sort of where the bulb, um, the papery bulb meets the green, cut them down and then plant them in the garden. And then you should hopefully get them back next year um, in the garden. So there we have it, your two different types of planter for the white mascara kits. So this is our final kit for February. So this is the resin dipped mascara kit. Um, this was actually our first pocket um, 10, 11 months ago. Um, we did some white mascara um, pots for Lydia and um, we did a tutorial on her YouTube and they just sold out so well. Um, yeah, I think we, we restocked them three times and they sold out each time. So this month we are bringing them back. Um, I do love the Berg's Potter terracotta pots. Um, I love the detail of them, but I also really love these. These are probably, um, you know, obviously they've got all the age sort of detailing on them, the resin, um, sort of a little bit of concrete thrown in there. Um, they all are different to each other. So no two pots are the same. Um, and yeah, they just work really, really beautifully with the um, with the spring bulbs. So with this kit, there's no drainage hole in the pot, so you do need to use all of your gravel. Um, we'll probably put a little bit more in for these kits than for this kit than we will for the ones with the drainage holes. But yeah, so starting off, adding in your gravel. So that just acts as drainage, so that when you water, um, the roots aren't going to sit in like a big pool. Of, um, of water so it's harder to overwater them okay so now we're going to go in with our compost so again using all of the compost in your kit with the idea that you're going to sort of bring the compost up to a level that means that you will be able to see the bulbs sort of around the rim of the pot so they're not sort of hooked deep into the pot they're sort of sat just around here so that you can really see that those lovely sort of papery bulbs so you'll get one um plastic pot of white mascara in your kit so you take your plant out oh it's a loose one and then you can start to gently tease apart your bulbs, keeping their root structure intact, like this. And then just position them with their roots sort of tucked underneath them. You can sort of screw them in almost so that the roots sort of sit underneath. So that the roots are going to get access to that compost underneath to the nutrients in the compost. So you can have them spread out if you want to, or you can cluster them in little groups together if you feel that looks nicer. That is personally the way that I like to do them. I like to have them sort of clustered together. So for example, for this, these three, I probably will just keep them together and plant them straight in like that. And then you can have just sort of a little jiggle around as to where you want your bulbs to sit in your pot. But I personally do prefer it when they're not perfectly uniform um, and they are sort of a bit more kind of clustered. The other good thing about having them clustered is that then you get to kind of show off that moss as well. And that's when you can go in with your beautiful bun moss, this one here, because you've got a nice sort of gap of compost that it can then just sit on. I'm just going to take some of the root system off the bottom just to give it a bit of a flatter sort of appearance so it's easier to sort of sit 
on top of the compost. You can then slightly lift up your bulb if you want to and tuck the moss underneath it. So then you're getting a really good view of, um, of the bulb. So again, just taking that sort of root structure off the bottom side of the bun moss, so of this side, just to make it slightly less dense, but then just sits a little bit better on top. And now I'm going to add in some flat moss. Again, as you'll see, just by clustering them together, it adds more space for the moss to sort of take quite a, a focal point. So it's not just touches of moss, you're actually getting a really substantial area so you can see all the different types of mosses in your kits. So now I'm going to add in the sphagnum moss that's, that's going to sit sort of in the middle in this sort of cluster of bulbs here. Being really gentle um, not to knock the tiny offshoot muscari, um, like for example this one here. So all the moss is in, and now we can go in with our twigs. So in each kit, you'll have the dry thyme twigs and the birch twigs. So I'm starting with the dry thyme. And we're just gonna place that in amongst the bulbs Again, if you want to lay it flat, you can. But it's brittle, so it's easy just to snap little bits off. I love the comparison between the sort of the twigs and the moss, and then the spring bulb sort of just poking through. Yeah, if you want to just lay it flat, you can. So it just gives that sort of, almost sort of carpet, woodland feel. Okay, so that's the dry time. Now we can add in our birch twigs. just cut them down and then simply position them in. So the birch twigs are there mainly to add some support to the muscari when it grows and um, because they are a really kind of relaxed sort of you know um, delicate bulb flower they don't have strong structured stems which I love about them but it does mean that they're kind of floppy so you need a little bit of structure to sort of try and keep them upright but they will just crisscross over each other they'll do their own thing um, but that is the beauty in them I think so as with the other kits watering every sort of two days to keep that soil really nice and damp not waterlogged um, away from um, fresh fruit and radiators direct direct heat sources um, as cool as possible but don't don't worry too much about it um, you know if they're warm it just means that they'll bloom quicker um, but you know it's not a massive deal and then um, yeah keeping them nice and damp and once they do go over once they do go sort of dried and sort of almost they go a little like a almost like a, like a brownie colour that still looks actually in my opinion quite nice um, you can then cut the stems down to where the sort of the top of the bulb and then you can plant them in your garden and they should come back next spring. So there you have it, that's the last of our February pop kits, um, the resin dipped white muscari plant uh, pop kit. Um, and yeah, just bringing back an old favorite and yeah, I hope you love it as much as I do.